The replacement of the original rover vehicle by the meteorological balloon created a problem for sound editor Wilfred Thompson. Well, I saw one script, I think. Yeah. Uh, very difficult to, you know, to visualise it, honestly. Um, with the vehicle, which is the most important thing, me being the sound man, I had to make a sound up for this vehicle uh, that went up steps and underwater and flew. And they had it down Port Marion. But I th it, it didn't work. It wouldn't go up steps. So I hear. So the next thing, they asked me to make a sound up after I spent about a month trying to get the sound for a vehicle. Now I had to change it to a balloon. And I didn't know what kind of balloon and nobody was telling me. <laughs> so uh, I had to wait till we got the first rushes in. So I could see what the balloon was, and then try and make a sound for it. After Pat explained what he wanted, uh, but it wasn't easy. So because he, there were certain sounds he didn't want. If he wanted, at that time, you know, the most advanced sounds were Doctor Who, electronic wires, and I thought, well, this is going to be a doddle. But he made the point that he didn't want that. Especially, you know, you didn't want the Doctor Who sounds. So I thought, where do we go from there? Uh, and then he, he, I begin to think that he's looking for something that's half human, you know. So I just went and tried and played around. Amongst the uh, initial ideas for a sound effect for the new rover was the laboured breathing of a deep sea diver complete with mask. Uh, this was thought to be appropriate because Rover was, after all, an air-filled balloon. However, this was rejected after the completion of the first cut of the episode Arrival. Well, we went in and uh, I'm trying to think. In fact, I can't remember now what other things we tried with it. Must have been many, many things till I hit on this idea of an inner tube and I put some uh, pellets in there, gunshot pellets, and uh, sealed the tube up, blew it up, and rolled the tube around which gave us that sound, or the main sound for rope, and then we added other things. Amongst layers used to build up the final sound effect was the slow running recording of a man screaming in the lecture hall of a London school of physics. <coughs> this became the familiar rover's roar. Also used was a monk's chorus. Played in reverse, of course. Now that the village guardian had been changed to a balloon, a shot was devised for the dramatic first appearance of Rover, in which it was to grow in seconds from the size of a golf ball to its familiar six feet in diameter. This effect was achieved by the placing of a miniature balloon in the fountain and bursting it a few frames before revealing the full-sized rover on the Gloriette beyond. The problem of bursting the smaller rover from some distance was handled by propman Mickey O'Toole. I shot that every time with a pellet gun. That little one on the top was a small balloon, a white balloon that I blew up and made for it and put it up. And strangely enough, it danced on top of the fountain yeah. without coming off. Yeah. And I think I missed one in, in about eight takes from going from the bang to the one above. And I, I think he gave me abuse for missing it. He said, come on, come on, get your act together. Because I missed one. With this pellet gun, and I was away about 12 to 14 feet away from that little thing. They would have uh, an ordinary pellet gun, small pellet, to break it. And it was no bigger than a golf ball, that little thing on top. And I put it up there on top of that and blew it every time, except once I missed it. I must have been getting fed up with the whole bloody thing by then. 
But it worked. It looked good, didn't it? To indicate how powerful Rover could be, a scene was added depicting a villager being engulfed by the balloon. This character was played by the third assistant director. That was Seamus Byrne. Uh, Seamus acted as a kind of a runner, third assistant director there. And uh, it was necessary f to get someone being engulfed by the balloon. And this was a rather tricky thing because they were big balloons. There was an awful lot of powder inside them. And Seamus, anyhow, offered to be engulfed by the balloon.